There's a new breed of income trust, energy income trusts, but are they really that different from the old ones? Joining us to look at these new energy income vehicles, Keith Schaefer, editor of the Oil and Gas Investments Bulletin. Keith, thanks very much for coming on the show. Great to see you. Andy, thank you. So the bottom line here is that you can have an energy trust, uh, it gets the privilege, tax treatment, etc., but the assets have to be outside Canada. That's right. One of the big differences, well, the big difference this round of income trust versus the old round is that all the assets must be outside the United, outside of Canada. And, and the three that have come to the board so far have all gone to Texas. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they are Argent Energy, Equal Energy, and Parallel Energy. We'll talk about those in a bit more detail in a sec. But one of the interesting things here is that they're not purporting to be growth vehicles. They're just income vehicles. They shoot for a 10% yield or so. Yes, well, a couple of the assets are getting, a couple of the companies are getting a little more aggressive. You're seeing both okay. Eagle and Argent starting to get into a growth mode. Parallel, the Natural Gas Trust was always very definitive in their talks to the market saying, yes, we're just going to be an income vehicle. Eagle has now uh, decided that they're going to be a, a, more of a growth vehicle and Argent as well. So we're starting to see a little more pickup on the growth side in this sector. So let's uh, talk about payout ratios. I mean, generally, are these people paying out more, uh, more than 100% of their cash flow? How does this work? Right now, they are. So it, one of the big things that happened in the last go-round of the income trust cycle was that there was a huge appetite for dividends and distribution. So these companies would pay out a lot more than their cash flow and rely on the equity markets to fill that cash flow gap. Well, just because of a few growing pains, all three of these new trusts are now paying out over 100% of their cash flow, substantially more, actually. Wow. Parallel, the, the natural gas trust has been hit with natural gas prices being a lot lower, so they're almost 200% at their current payout ratio. And that's, that's the full payout ratio, including the distributions and their drilling costs. Eagle Energy is around 150%, and Argent Energy is, is very similar. The plan here is that these, the, the two oil-based ones, Eagle Energy and Argent, are going to grow into their cash flow, and, and they have the land base to do that, but right now, everybody is paying out over 100%. What do you think? I mean, is there, how stable is that for investors? Well, I, I think investors need to look at a couple things. One is remember that these are junior companies. Mm -hmm. They're all producing under 10,000 barrels a day, and so they're, they're going to be a little more volatile. Second, I think investors want to ask how much are these companies hedged because when you're paying out that much more than cash flow, you're really vulnerable to a swing in commodity price. So if oil has a downturn early in the new year with all the new shale production coming on potentially, nobody really knows, but if, if oil goes lower, then these payout ratios could even go higher and they'd be more dependent on the market to raise equity. So it's very important to ask how much are they hedged and how much are they really going to be able to grow in the next year? The one you like best right now is Eagle Energy. Tell us a bit about that one. Well, Richard Clark and his team here had some growing pains initially uh, right after they went public. They had to take over operatorship of their assets, and, and, and that kind of put them back a couple quarters. But they've really done a great job in managing these assets, growing production. They've increased production probably 800% since they took over the salt flat field in Texas. And so their cash flow is now picking up. They're still a couple quarters behind, but they've shown that they're really good operators. They've shown that the asset is good. And in their new Midland play in Texas, they're also growing production quite well. I'd like to see them be a little more hedged, but that'll happen as they increase their drilling. But uh, they've been able to return 10% a year, just like they promised since they went public. And, and, and I think they're on track now. So I'm, I'm fairly comfortable there. Can we jump to parallel? Because, of course, they've been the dog of the sector, relatively speaking. Um, CIBC, there's Eagle Energy Trust, uh, essentially, uh, over the past three months. Um, uh, parallel, CIBC was one of the underwriters. They say they should be OK, they sh even if they cut the distribution. It'll still have a big yield, and CIBC says the debt shouldn't be a rock they found her on. What do you think? How did Parallel get into so much trouble? Was it just low natural gas prices? For the most part, it was just low natural gas prices. They, they set themselves up uh, as very specifically the non-growth vehicle. They were going to be strictly income. Mm -hmm. uh, they set themselves up to be uh, with assets that would require very little maintenance capital to keep their distribution. So they wouldn't have to spend a lot of money drilling mm -hmm. to keep their distribution up. But of course, so they weren't built for growth. So when natural gas prices fell out of bed, they really didn't have the asset base that they could ramp up to get their cash flow going. 
And of course, we all know what's happened to natural gas prices. They've fallen through the floor, and so this trust has really been hit hard on that. Uh, I, I think the debt is an issue. They probably are going to uh, have to cut their distribution. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think the Canadian banks who basically fund these companies have been very good at working with the producers to make sure they don't get into any real trouble. So I, I don't see any asset sales on the horizon just because the relationship between the Canadian banks and the companies are quite good. But it's just something that I would rather be sitting on the sidelines right now waiting to see what happens before jumping in. Okay, and just for disclosure, you do own some uh, Eagle Energy units or shares, but you, you, don't, um, you don't own Argent or Parallel at this stage. Correct. Well, Keith, it's always great talking to you, and I hope you come back soon. Andy, thanks so much for having me. Our guest has been Keith Schaefer, editor of the Oil and Gas Investments Bulletin.